YouTube is it going? The Goat House is back with the Saints video, going over a preview, what to watch, players to watch, games to watch, and more. Uh, we did about half the teams in this new series that I'm, I'm loving, and there's a playlist on the channel if you want to check those out. Comment which team I should do next. The Saints, a team in the earlier part of the offseason was doubting a little bit. Um, you know, and a lot of people are, but starting to think maybe they could get back on track. Possibly they can get back on track, and we'll we'll discuss reasons why in this video a little more in depth. But yeah, I thought chemistry was a little bit of an issue last year. We'll talk about that more. But at the end of the year, maybe figured it out, winning four of the last five. Uh, you know, and the games they lost were fairly close. I thought last year, maybe they let them slip away at times, and they had some impressive wins. So if you can stay a little more consistent, hey, maybe the Saints are back. Well, let's discuss it. Uh, number three. For the big things to watch here, this is kind of a two-parter. Uh, not just the edge rotation, but the cornerback rotation as well. If you look at those position groups, they have insane depth. Some of the best depth in football at those positions. Starters on the edge last year, off the edge last year, obviously Cam Jordan and Carl Granderson. Granderson really stepped up, earned himself a new contract, but... They add Chase Young. They gave him a pretty decent contract, and we'll talk about him a little bit more in this video, but a big one, obviously, a little inconsistent, pretty inconsistent, but has some flashes. Uh, they drafted Isaiah Foskey last year, which I, I, I like Foskey at Notre Dame, always productive. Uh, I felt like a really good fit, so does he figure it out? They have Peyton Turner, which was a raw prospect. Uh, you know, they had some injuries when he was coming out of Houston, so does he figure it out now? Uh, Passanio, always been a solid rotation guy. So, I mean, they have a number of guys that can play, a number of guys that I think are capable of starting too. Not Some of those guys won't start, but that's a really good group. So I'm, I'm looking to see if having, you know, because it's such an important position, having legit players, but having this, unlimited rotation it feels like of good players and guys that have upside helps them win I think it will help them win football games because it's such an important spot and you just you know if a guy catches fire in a game then you kind of let you know play him a little bit more they have just so many different varieties of varieties of edge pairings they could do throughout the season so I love that in the cornerback rotation the Saints love their corners they've they always have good corners Marshawn Lattimore if he's on the field if he's healthy he very well could be the best corner in football he's that good Paulson Adebo, Adebo really broke out last year big time playmaker we know he's going to be solid out there I like Lante Taylor another guy that's a big playmaker another guy could play outside in the inside and in the inside um you know they they have so many guys. They draft Kool-Aid McKinstry, which I thought yeah, everyone knew was good, but I thought people were you know, maybe sleeping on him a little bit. He's just super consistent, always been really good, dating back to high school, was a top recruit, uh, really good for Alabama, really smart, really physical, you know, can can play man. I like him. I like them for, for him for their two-man under schemes. So uh, they got crazy, and there's more than just that, but they got crazy depth, really good starters, and cornerback, really, a really hard position to play. I, in my opinion, probably the second hardest position to play in football after quarterback. Doesn't mean it's the second most important, but um, edge, you combine a good edge, which is more important, but good edge with good corners, and they both have good starters, and they both have good depth. Combine those things together, that's something. It means something to me, so it's something I get excited about, and, and I'm very curious to see how many reps these guys get, how they use the rotation. Um there might be a there might be a scenario in either position where they don't really need a much for rotation because the starters are so good. That's fine too. So uh, a lot of different scenarios here with with the with the uh, this group, and, and it's really good for Den Dennis Allen's defense and uh, you know what how good this defense can be. You know, and and that's uh, the Saints brand of defense has been. I mean, you look at the last I don't know how many years 10, 15 years. This is just top of my head. Like, what if you were to ask me last 10, 15 years, top of your head, which defense has been the most consistent, like almost guaranteed to be good? I, the Saints might be the answer. Like, out of the last several years, like it was almost a lock that the Saints defense, and you know, I don't know if they were ever the best. Maybe I mean, there's probably a few years in there where they're maybe number one, but they were a lock to be a very good defense. And last year, maybe they took a little bit of a step down, and then it makes you want to go, and it's logical, it makes you want to go like. 
yeah, maybe they're declining a little bit because the game's changing a bit. The younger coaches are taking taking over. They have that old school. They run a lot of man coverage, specific, specifically two man under so much of it. Maybe it's getting predictable. And Demario Davis still great, but Demario Davis, Cam Jordan. Tyron Matthew, Marshawn Latimer. Latimer's still young, but some of these guys are, they're not getting any better, I guess. And some of them aren't getting worse. They're still great if they're on the field. But that would be like the logic behind maybe they're starting to take a little bit of a step down. And last year they weren't bad. They just kind of were a little, they weren't really on that Saints brand of defense. Um, so they could be heading the wrong way. But I, I think they're, you know, with the, because of edge and because of corner and Demario Davis is still balling and they've added that linebacker. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Maybe they can get back on track. Maybe they can get back on track. They got a lot of good ball players. They've added some young guys over the years. So uh, maybe it's just about the timing. Like some of the young guys really starting to maybe figure it out. Like some guys were, were a little underwhelming so far. Peyton Turner, Isaiah Fosk, he's only played one year. Maybe they step in and really get going at the perfect time when the veterans start to take a step down. So some optimistic, you know, some positivity, I guess we'll say there. Uh, the number two, which is a big thing. I mean, the biggest issue last year uh, for offense, I thought, was I think most people would go, yeah, Derek Carr was inconsistent. He wasn't that good, and that's true. He wasn't that great. He was inconsistent, I suppose. Maybe he didn't have the best offensive line. And the offensive line is a big question when it comes to offense this year. How good will it be? Ramchek supposed to be injured still, but they add Fuaga. Does Penning step up? Uh, offensive line, you know, during the Drew Brees years, were, they were it was always so good. It was, it was consistently good, and now it's just not the same. So that could be an issue. That's a big question. You know, if I had negatives to say about the Saints, how will the offensive line be, and then how will Carr be? Do they have enough receivers? I'm not really worried about that. Uh, um, we'll talk about more of the offense, and I guess with the next one, the rush offense and the next one. Defense, I'm not really worried about. I, I, I'm a little bit optimistic they can get back on track again. We talked about number three is a big thing for me, but I think people backtrack a little bit. I think people kind of going to knock offensive line, which they should, and Derek Carr based off last year. But I think the number one thing was chemistry, and that resulted in them being inconsistent. Like one week, offense looked explosive, where they would march down the field, and then they would kind of be disappointed. Maybe play calling went, when it was a part on that, like lack of, I suppose. Uh, but I think, again, chemistry, I thought it was pretty, and Saints fans probably know what I'm talking about. Like I thought it was pretty obvious, or if you watch the Saints in prime time, maybe if you got the chance to watch them, I know because not everybody can watch these teams every single game, but they... Carr and the receivers just were not in the, they were not in the same page. And as productive as Olave was, uh, him and Carr were often not on the same page. And, and there was some frustration. Carr really showing that, which I didn't love. I thought that was a big issue. Like visibly angry and shaking his head on the sideline, you know, at, at the receivers. I didn't love that. So hopefully he cuts it out with that stuff. Uh, but remember, Carr just got in there last year and they just were not on the same page. And that's a big thing for this year. Can they get chemistry? So it's one thing if a team's like when they're bad, they're they're bad because they're just bad. It's you know, and it's one thing if like you know the Saints when they were bad on offense. I I thought it was more of a chemistry thing, and I almost think in a way maybe that's a good thing because they weren't just a they weren't bad like they had talent. You know, so if they figure out the chemistry part. They could be a good team this year, and there is some optimistic there, optimism there with them figuring that out because I thought they kind of showed signs. I said at the beginning of this video, I thought they kind of showed signs of that, of life in that regard, you know, that category at the end of last year, winning four of their last five and really kind of coming alive here. So, in another full off season and preseason for, you know, Carr, Alave, A.T. Perry, and Perry started getting going too as a rookie at the end of last year. Uh, Shahid, it's just more of time to grow as a group. They do get another offensive coordinator in there. And I didn't love the hire, to be honest. I'm not a huge Clint Kubiak guy, but that was based on his one stint as uh, – is one outing as an offensive coordinator. I thought it was too like old school football. Like you have to run to open the pass passing game. Like you absolutely have to run on early downs. You absolutely have to run on short yardage. And he learned a little bit from the Niners. They run the ball a lot, but there's a good reason they do it. Um, you know, so maybe, maybe we shouldn't base fully off the one season. Of course, maybe he's learned some things. I obviously I would think he should have. Um, so that's kind of the only thing there. Did they actually get better? They're different. Did they actually get better in terms of the play calling? Because that was my major issue with his one year as a play caller was 
play calling and just being too insistent on running the football um, in situations where you try to be a little more unpredictable. But the chemistry should be up. But speaking of running the football, that's my number one. And people could take this a bad way because, again, Clint Kubiak, you know, son of Gary Kubiak, offense coordinator, and they were they were live and die by run the football, you know, that West Coast, run the football uh, to, to try to hit those home run plays. Um you know, on the ground and open up the passing game, control the clock, and in limit chances of the other team. So that is a little old school. So it's not really something that people these days get super excited about, but it does mean they're going to run the ball a lot. But I do think it makes sense for this offense. You know, Derek Carr, I think, could be better this year because of the chemistry reasons we talked about. But he, at the end of the day, he's not really getting uh, any better of a quarterback he's not going to all of a sudden get generate new talent right um and the receivers aren't and Olave is great but it's not like this loaded receiver group you know Michael Thomas prime Michael Thomas isn't out there anymore and the offensive line isn't the greatest in terms of pass protection they maybe they'd be a little bit better Fuaga could be very solid as a rookie I felt like he was pro ready I thought he was better as a run blocker and what was he known for like he stood out compared to the other offense lineman as a specifically a a outside zone which really fits you know the west coast offense to Kubiak uh, and he really stood out like you can make a highlight tape from him in that scheme blocking scheme running game specifically getting outside getting downfield so they're going to take advantage of that this team is going to run the football run the football run it some more and I think they have a, they could have a three-headed monster it could end up being two uh, with the obvious Alvin Kamara and Jamal Williams um, two really good it's a good one-two punch but uh, Kendra Miller I liked a lot of TCU and he was very young a very young prospect so he really could kind of click in the gear here and get going so they could have a and it's kind of a question mark how will they use those running backs how will they rotate them like how many snaps are they going to divide it up uh, or is it going to go full go Camara some weeks is it going to be a one two punch with Williams some weeks so it's going to be very interesting, but they will come out there. They'll punch you in the mouth. They'll run the football. They'll hit some home home runs. They'll throw the ball to the backs, uh, and they're going to do that to open up the passing game, which if they're – I think they'll be successful running the ball. So if you're very successful running the football, and I think they very much will be, that kind of by default opens up the passing game. So there's the positive there. Um, you know, And the, how will the offensive line hold up? I think they'll be better run blocking than pass blocking. So we'll see. We'll see how this works out. Uh, for the Saints, but there are some things to, to be positive about, I suppose. Players to watch. I'm going to go Willie Gay. It's an interesting addition from the Kansas City Chiefs, and sometimes these Chiefs uh, defenders, maybe they're not as good away from that scheme, but Saints run a good defense, well coached, and they run a very similar scheme, especially for the linebackers. It's a very similar scheme compared to the Kansas City Chiefs compared to uh, Spagnola's defense. Uh, and Willie Gay, I think... Could be used in multiple different ways here. And I actually think possible in a year later, but a possible Caden Ellis replacement because they missed him last year and they used him in different ways. They blitz him, align him different spots, but was an up and coming linebacker for them. They lost him to the Falcons last offseason, so they were missing him the whole season. I think that's what the plan is here. They saw a guy that kind of can play that role. Maybe he still has some upside in that role. I always liked Willie Gay as a rusher. I think he's a good blitzer, even when the Chiefs would randomly put him off the edge, which was not too often. I thought I saw a little bit more of it two years ago. I I thought he was pretty solid there. Not that the Saints are going to do a ton of that with him. They don't really need him to. Uh, But I think he can be used as a weapon. And I know they blitzed Mario Davis a ton, getting up there in age. Do they want to do it as much? They could. I don't really have a problem with it. Uh, but, yeah, I'm very curious to see Willie Gay and the Saints defense and how they use him. He definitely could be a factor. Uh, I'm going to go Chris Olave at number, at number two. And we know what we're going to get from him. We're going to get a good football player, obviously. A young, up, still upside, big-time threat receiver. But I put him up here, kind of going back to what we talked about a ton in this video, is the chemistry. I really thought him and Carr were off a lot. Like, he's going one way, Carr's throwing the other way, and there's some frustration and uh, even with that, and Olave had some games where it was like, you wish there was a little bit more, maybe a little bit more consistent to catch the ball. But even so, with all of that, he still was easily a thousand yard receiver, was still a big time player. He's still a guy that is a big time player with a lot of upside. So, I, I, yeah, I'm counting on that chemistry kind of clicking a little bit more. And Olave just, 
I mean, I don't see why he doesn't continue to get better as a football player because he's just been in the league for a couple of years, a uh, few years here. So I, I think this guy could be scary good if everything kind of clicks, and I don't see why not. Again, I'm expecting the chemistry to be better, and I'm expecting him just to continue to progress as he is that type of player. So it's a guy to really get excited about, could end up being one of the better receivers in football in the near future. Uh, and then number one, I'm going to go Chase Young. All eyes on Chase Young. What kind of Chase Young are we going to get? This guy was an elite prospect coming out of Ohio State. Dealt with some injuries. Was pretty productive. But it was like we were left like, you know, wanting a little bit more. Like seemed to be a pretty polished stop in the run early on. But the injuries kind of set him, set him back. And we were just... We were like the breakouts coming. Like he's solid when he's on. He's solid when he's on the field, but it's just underwhelming. You know, maybe you want a little bit more motor. Wait, but he's again good player. You're waiting for the breakout, and the Commanders kind of just dump him, um, which is a little surprising. The Niners take him. Looks pretty decent right away. Then it's underwhelming, and then he's getting ripped after some of the playoff games because he's give, giving super low effort, and that's pretty much the talk. Like everyone making fun of Chase Young, pretty much. And it was we had an extra week break into the Super Bowl, and it felt like he kind of heard that. I thought he played fairly well in that game. We saw a lot more motor. Uh, and then he gets a contract with the Saints. Maybe he ended up getting a little bit more than we thought. Not that he's not deserving of it. I would take a chance. I think the talent is, is in there. Um, but I, I thought teams would just be a little bit scared because nobody was trading for him at the deadline. Niners got him for less than expected. Uh, I, I thought teams would just kind of give him a one year for a cheaper deal. And he had something going on with his neck and needed a little bit of an operation there. So uh, um, now he's got that money. You know, now he's on a team that's not, you know, about to win or trying to win a Super Bowl. Like what? And he's been super inconsistent, but he still has a ton of upside. Which Chase Young are we going to get? We're going to get a guy that's taking it easy. What, what are we going to get here? The talent is there. Even more talent than we have seen is there. So, um, like we said, they have a really good rotation. So how many snaps he can be playing if he's not giving full effort? Uh, it's all eyes on him. It's just a big question there. I think he'd be very good, but we will see. Uh, games to watch. Uh, I got to put the Broncos in week seven on here. The, uh, the Sean Payton going to New Orleans. So a little bit of a revenge game there, I suppose, uh, in a way. I don't know if it's that much revenge the way that situation happened, but um, – it should be fun, and I think it's a must-win for the Saints. The Broncos aren't supposed to be super great this year, but but Sean Payton knows what he what they're about. Saints know what they're you know they're Sean Payton's team's about. I suppose to me, it's gonna be a must-win win game when you're kind of clicking in the gear here mid-season in Week Seven. I like the Chargers game at Chargers Week Eight. I think most people think the Chargers should be a better team than the Saints. I think almost everybody will say that. Not saying it's like a landslide. Um, you know, towards the Chargers end. Uh, but I think quarterback difference would probably be the reason and the coaches of the Chargers have added. But but uh, I, I, I think the Saints, like I said, they should be a pretty damn effective rushing attack. Like, they should be really good running the football. And that's kind of my biggest worry about the Chargers is specifically the interior defense line, but the linebackers you can factor in as well. So I think teams that really pound the football, really could run the football, could give the Chargers some big-time problems. So this, going into Week 8, let's say the Chargers have an insanely good record. Maybe the Saints are struggling a little bit. And the Saints maybe could be favorites in that game just because of that reason, just a matchup. So we'll see. And then Week 17, the Derek Carr revenge game um, against the Raiders. That should be fun for that reason. But it also could be absolute must win for these teams if they're fighting for a playoff spot. You know, Or maybe the Saints are fighting for their division. So that will be a big game in Week 17. Uh, and then fans takes. Had a lot of fans takes here. Some uh, ex-subscribers. Antronaut says your lucky day, Jacob, and he's talking about the, the J, J, Jacob to the to the, his post to the right or to the right of that, I should say. Um, so that's pretty funny. He's a big Saints fan over there. But Antronaut, what does he have to say? Can Carr bounce back and stay healthy? Yeah, big questions there. Uh, offensive scheme, play calling improvements with Clint Kubiak. Yeah, a lot, lot of ripping the play calling Carmichael last year. Um, but will it actually be better? I did not. Again, I talked about. I did not love that hire. 
but they'll be good running the football. We'll see if Kubiak made some improvements. We'll see if it means improvements to the Saints. CB ro- uh, cornerback rotation with McKinstry. Yeah, such a good, like, polished, plug-and-play, pro-ready type corner, but they have so many good corners. Is it a rotation? We talked about a little bit. It's going to be interesting. Willie Gay, eventual DeMario replacement. Yeah, I talked about him as a, a Ken Ellis replacement a year later because they didn't have Ken Ellis last year. But do they kind of work him into the future? It's a good point. DeMario Davis replacement. Uh, Talis Fuaga. Yeah, we touched on him a little bit. Pro-ready type pick. He, he should help them out a ton. Um, I think he's going to be much better as a run blocker early on than as a pass protector. Not that I think he'll be bad as a pass protector. Uh, but it really fits like that outside zone scheme, get downfield, and the next level blocks. That's a, the, the scheme that Kubiak has. That's what he loves. You know, that, that's exactly what they look for, for there. Uh, pass rush rotation, yeah, he's on the same page. I'm very curious because they have a long list of guys. A.T. Perry breakout, yeah. He looked very good. The, the game they almost came back against the Vikings, he looked very impressive. Like They had really no answer for him, it felt like. Um, so he, I almost put him in the players to watch list. I think he's got to be the receiver three, so it's a guy to watch there, especially in the red zone, contested catches. Uh, so we'll see. Cam Sullivan, offensive health and consistency. Yeah, we, we didn't really talk about health enough probably. That's kind of been a thing for the Saints over the last several years is durability. Um, you know, kind of holding them back a little bit. So that is a big thing for them. Chase Young on a new team. We touched on that. Which Chase Young are we going to get? Receiver two, I definitely think has to be Shahid. But you could argue, I guess, that Shahid is kind of situational and like in a home run type receiver. Can he add more to his game? I think he does enough to be the receiver two, but that actually could be a good point. Uh, at first glance, it's like, yeah, it should be a no-brainer, but hey, not so fast. Uh, defensive rotation. We talked about it. Yeah, how about the interior, though? Uh, Bruzzy, does he stay healthy? Does he uh, continue to get better? That could be big. And to take the Saints inconsistently leads to third place finish a top 10 draft pick. Yeah, that's kind of the story of last year, inconsistency. I, I went a little more in depth and talked about the chemistry and some other things. But bottom line is, if you want to sum it up for everybody, they were inconsistent last year. Super inconsistent. Um, but... Yeah, I thought the games they lost, they were kind of close, but they let kind of some games slip away. I think a good team like the Packers, when they played them, I thought they outplayed them. They outplayed them most that game, I, I thought, if I'm remembering it correctly, and I thought they let it kind of slip away. They had just an example of several games that they had, so uh, we'll see. Do they get more consistent? Do they have more chemistry? Does the defense kind of get back on that Saints brand defense? Do they take advantage of having all those edge rushers and all those corners? And they could. Gavin Mallard, uh, balance of corner snaps. We have same. It's a Good point. Alvin Kamara bounced back. Yeah, playing the full season and uh, being as good as that he can be. Uh, Trevor Penning, make it or break it. And he says he's not a believer. Yeah, I wasn't a believer in Penning either. I didn't have a a lot of, as a prospect, I didn't have a lot of uh, feelings that other people had or I, I didn't really see it with him. But then the Saints took it. I'm like, it seems like a really good fit. That could definitely work out. And so far, it has not worked out though. Um, so we'll see. Make it or break it. Riley Gr- uh, Griffith. Does Kendra Miller become a serious part of the offense, and who will see better production this year between Shahid and A.T. Parrott at receiver? These are good questions. We talked about Miller, probably the running back three, but because it's such a uh, run-heavy attack, do they use all three guys? I hope so. I like Kendra Kendra Miller. He was a raw, like, but already good, but very young prospect, so it kind of makes sense that he kind of didn't get going yet. Um, And then Shahid. Yeah, I thought going into this, I thought Shahid was – Clear-cut receiver two after Olave, but yeah, Cam Sullivan mentioned it though, and now Griffith, and it kind of makes me think, yeah, could somebody battle him since Shahid is, I don't want to say one-dimensional, there's a little more to his game, but does he add a little bit more, um, so it'll be something to watch, and Perry, I mean, again, that Vikings game like looked really good, it was more games than that, but uh, yeah, he may have something in. Uh, then Jacob, big Saints fan. Main things I'm excited to watch this upcoming year is the offensive line improved dramatically or barely with Fuaga. Yeah, it's a big question. It's going to depend on health, their ability. I, in the run blocking, I think we're going to see big improvements in the run blocking. Uh, I actually think I think a pretty big step up. I think they're be pretty decent run block. I mean, not great, but um, they could they could be pretty solid. They're going to run Fuaga side. Uh, even Penning, I thought he was more of that nasty Mauler type guy, better run blocking. I think even more I'm thinking about it in that scheme. I think that scheme is made. I think they'll coach them in terms of run blocking just fine. 
Um, so the more I think about it, big improvements in terms of run blocking, I still worry about the pass protection a little bit, though. I think it might be a night and day difference between run versus pass. We'll see what happens there. Can Alave take that next step and be like a – or will he be like a Brandon Cooks level player, like decent home run – more than decent, but home run hitting guy. I definitely think he's shown life of more than that. Even at Ohio State, it was more, yeah, relied on separation, kind of just home run guy and didn't do a whole lot after the catch. And there was not really knocks on him as a, as a prospect. Everyone loved him. It felt like a safe pick. But the knocks were, is he kind of like a one-style guy? Will it get old? But I think he's proven more than that. Like, he's good underneath. He's good going across middle field. I think he's already done more, actually, shown that he can do more. Uh, just something with him and Carr. We talked about in this video, the chemistry is a little off. I, I think it's got to be on this year. I think, and he's going to progress a little bit more. I think he could have an outstanding season and show he could be one of the better. I mean, there's so many good receivers in football. One of the better guys. And then the prediction, my beloved Saints, the best team in the NFC South, shocked the world and finished third in the division with a 6-11 and record. Ooh, uh, The offense continues to be average and the defense slightly above average, so they'll keep close in games just to lose by four or five most weeks. So that's kind of on brand of last year. Like, yeah. Close in losses, barely lost, let them slip away. The more I'm talking when I'm making this video, I think the defense will be a little bit like they were slightly above average last year. I think they can be more than slightly above average. Kind of get back on track there. Offense, the consistency. Again, I think the chemistry could click in the gear. They could be I, you know, rush attack. Could they get predictable though? Are they just are they good enough? That's kind of the question of the offense. Uh Caleb Jackson, pro, new offense coordinator should resurrect offense uh that Carma Carmichael murdered yeah and that's kind of my that that's kind of my thing maybe my I don't know what I'm trying to say uh where I'm saying not so fast on where Saints fans Saints fans go and I understand it I understand it they go yeah the play calling and it was so bad last year they didn't love what Carmichael did uh, the offense needs to be more consistent so pretty much any new guy is great and I understand that I understand that uh, and they sh it, it should help the run blocking, the scheme there. The running game should be consistent, should be good. It could be deadly at times. Those are positives. But, yeah, that's kind of my thing. I'd say not so fast. Don't like, don't get too optimistic. Cause I, I did not love Clint Kubiak. But, again, he, he learned from the Niners. He could be better. Um, it could be a really good fit. Uh, I, I just I think it could be predictable. I think it'd be pretty predictable. I thought Carmichael just had some random play calling, like just really random, and it was almost like backwards at times. So Kubiak could be bad, but in different ways. We will see. Uh, but I understand Saints fans being like optimistic about that. It's understandable. Receiver room can be much better than people expect with Alave and Shahid. I mean they. That's the thing. Like, if you think Olave and Shahid, what do you what do you think? Like, if you're getting specifically what type of receivers or where do they win the most? It's downfield, home run threat, speed, deep ball, tracking ability, can take the top off the defense. So defense is, yeah, defenses have to be worried about that. They have to be sitting back a little bit though and thinking about that. The safeties, but what this team should be is a they should be pounding the football and and they. That's what they're gonna do. I'm telling you. That's what they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna run to open up the pass, but they might pound the football to open up that deep shot, that surprise deep shot. So it really does stretch the defense out. So maybe it's a maybe Kubiak's offense fits it. Maybe it's just a good a perfect fit. Maybe he fits the Saints more than anybody there is because they with the three headed running back, they should be able to do his, play his game. And Fuaga, I think, really fits that style. Maybe maybe they, they they fit so well that they'll be able to pound the football very well, and then they have those guys that just take you get those surprise deep shots to they'll open up the play action pass. So as much as I don't really love Kubiak, and I'm not super super optimistic or confident, I'll say it is a really good fit, and it's kind of made for Kubiak here. Um, you know the, the 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 play action should be really good. It could end up being one of the better run play actions offenses. The more I think about it, cons uh, the tight end room is being held together by duct tape and safety depth. Um, yeah, Juwan Johnson injured. You know, uh, safety depth could be an issue with injury. Yeah, I guess that's a good point that we didn't touch on too much here. Uh, and then D Smith, do the Saints actually commit to a re? This is a really good take. 
uh, question, I suppose. Commit to a rebuild if things go south early in the season. They've been stuck. You know, they they kind of been. That's everyone. Everyone's starting to realize now the Saints have kind of been stuck in this loop. You know, where they. You know that they're in the off season. They're so they're they're so far in the negative in terms of cap. And yeah, they clear it. Everybody, it's a rule you have to clear. It. But then they can't really do much, and they have to like kick the can down the road more. And um, you know they they kind of just screw themselves over and over. But they almost have no choice. It's kind of something they set themselves up in the in the past. But yeah, if they if it's a really good point. Like if they really start to destroy, they're it's a really good point actually because. What he mentions is if things go south early in the season. Early in the season. So what he, what D Smith here, Danny Smith is is basically saying is do they do something during the year with this? And why I think that is actually I'm starting to think is a really good point. Something I didn't think about either is because if you and the, well things have to go south. If I, I don't know how south they'll go. That's kind of the flaw here. Like I don't know how south they'll go. Um, and he did say if, but if, if they end up being decent, not making the playoffs, then boom, they're in the off season. They have scheduled free agents. So less guys that you can trade away. You're kind of stuck with some guys and then you're kind of in a scramble, like buy free agency. We have to clear the space that we kind of screwed ourselves with. We're in a negative again. They will be, we can see it. They, they will be against as of right now. Um, you know, so then they're kind of in a scramble and there's not, the only options is make cuts you don't want to make and restructure contracts. But if they, so let's say, like like Danny here said, if they struggle early in the year, and I'm wondering if that could be a blessing in disguise because reality is, are they going to win a Super Bowl? Probably not. But I think they could be sneaky like we talked about more and more I'm realizing throughout this video. But if they struggle and at the deadline they go, Let's just have a fire sale. Let's get what we can get. I'll take, we'll take anything at this point, And this will really help our process in the off season. Let's trade some guys. Let's just do what we can do here. Let's help as much as we can. And then in the off season, they'll, they'll still be in the negative because they're in that much of a hole. Um, when they dig themselves out, maybe it won't be as bad, uh, you know, and they can just focus on, Hey, uh, we already decided to, to kind of, have a fire sale. Let's just only get young, cheap players and let's focus on the future here and not just because they dig themselves out of the hole that they dug because they have to and they still make interesting decisions with spending money. Um, you know, so it is a really interesting talking point, a really good point that about during the season. Everybody, I think, realizes the Saints are messing up, kind of continuing to kick the can down the road and then making these judgments in the offseason. But how about in season, like he mentioned here? So that. Really good, really good take there. Really good comment. Uh, more, we got a couple more. Almighty Par uh, Parks. Yep, uh, it's a little small, so I'm hard hard to read from back here. Monitors up there. Uh, Chase Young expectations. Yeah, we touched on that. It's just which Chase Young going to get. Paulson Debo extension uh, worth. Yeah, because he was so good last year. Big time playmaker. Does he do it again? Uh, is he consistent? They have so many other corners. Do they play just as good? Are they going to be a fan of not paying big time money? It's a really good point too. Are they going to be a fan of not paying really like big time money because they have they they can find they know corners. Well, if Dennis Allen's gone, then you know maybe maybe not anymore. But uh, he knows corners. They've always drafted good corners. They can develop. They know they know cornerbacks. Hundred um, percent. You know. So do they? Yeah, is the staff that kind of brings up is the staff going to be the same? Is going to be a completely different staff, um, and they've had their their patent and you know they're, they're the two man under team. The Saints have always under Dennis Allen. They've always been the two man under team. You know, so I'm starting this just mentioning Adebo and his extension is bringing me. It's it's causing more conversation here. You know, or do, yeah, do they feel that they don't need to extend? They can have guys step up. Where does Lattimore go? There was, you know, after this year, what's what's the thoughts there? Because there was trade talks possibly during this offseason. No more though. Uh, at this point, that I from what I, from we've heard, interesting stuff. Camara contract dispute. Yeah, I don't think I don't know what they're gonna do with him. I don't know if they want to give him any more money. Obviously, and they kind of and they have a good group of guys, so it'd be interesting. Um, a lot of the expectations. Yeah, we touched on that Kool Aid Kool Aid 
playing time. We, we kind of touched on that as well. Very curious to see that. And then Tyson Wilson takes Spencer Rattler takes a starting job after the bye week and shows a lot of promises. The future quarterback will Levis type situation. Yeah. Pretty interesting. I see a lot of people actually think that it is a little bold because Rattler is he pro ready the systems he came from and he kind of, um, is, yeah, he's a little inconsistent. Um, but he was, when we first saw him play at Oklahoma, he like he, the flashes were unreal, and he was a top recruit. It's like, okay, this guy's going to be something. So does just being in a, an NFL program, like organization, does it just kind of does a does a, a switch flip? You know, I could definitely I could see it. It's a little bold right now, but I could see it. Um, you know, and and I heard he's matured a little bit because that was a big issue. We've heard that throughout the process. Uh, could it be a Will Levis, and Will Levis was a much better prospect, but. Um. Uh, yeah, could it be that type of situation? Does Carr get injured? Or does he struggle? So I could see it for those reasons. Um, they have Hainer as well, but is he suspended for the beginning of the season? I think I remember that. It was interesting, but um, yeah, it's an interesting take there. Something to think about. We'll see if Rattler gets on the field in this year or anytime in the near future. But this was a good one. This, this I like this. I love the series. I loved it. I love it more than I thought I would. But this video I really liked because we were kind of. I kind of learn things about like kind of talking out loud about these things and what you guys have to say. That's why I love getting, getting you guys involved here. A um, lot of fun, a lot of fun. So hopefully people catch on to this series and it picks up a little bit more because I really enjoy it. That's going to do it for this one. If you want to join in on the action on X or on Twitter, X slash Twitter links pin in the comments for that. Check out our sponsors, liquid IV GLD shop code goat percentage off. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.